what prisons were you stationed during the length of that 19 or 20 months? Um, when you get locked up in New York, you go to a place called Downstate. Everybody go to Downstate. That's like intake. Um, from, from Downstate, sometimes you either, um, you get classified in Downstate. So then you either go from your, your spot from Downstate or you go to um, a place called Ulster. Um, Ulster is another intake, but it's more like a camp. Um, and if you have like a nonviolent charge, they might send, they'll, they'll probably end up sending you to Ulster and they'll try to give you what they call shock. Shock is like a, a six month program that, that's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, uh, like the military, like it's like some military shit or whatever. So they give you a chance to go to shop in Ulster. They make you sit in a class and um, watch these videos of niggas picking up logs and shit, stomping in the rain, yelling chants and all type of stupid ass shit like that or whatever. Um, showing the, the sergeants being disi uh, like disciplinary, you know, whatever and just talking to you crazy and all that other shit. They show you all of that on the tape. And then at the end of the class, they give you a paper and you um, you sign if you wanna be a part of it or not, if you wanna do it or not. If not, then you leave, you go back to wherever, and then they find a place for you to go, like another spot. So I, I went from downstate to Ulster I curved the, the shock shit, and they sent me to a place called Hudson. And you stayed there for the remainder of the time? Um, the majority of the time I was there. And then, like, towards the end of my bid, they sent me, I was, like, three and a half hours away. So towards the end of my bid, they sent me, like, two hours away um, to a place called Fishkill, and that's where I did the remainder of my bid at. And why the reason for the transfer there? Um, sometimes when you when you don't got that much time left, they 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 send you to a place that's closer to home, or um, a place that's like that's not as crazy as where you are or whatever. In my case, Hudson is like Hudson is where like a lot of like lifers go when they they classification drop. And they chilling, they not like on on bullshit no more. Uh, or you got non a nonviolent crime, and they want to put you on um, outside clearance, like where you get to go outside and you might go do fucking I don't know sweep the highway or some shit like that, or pick up trash on the side of the highway, or shovel snow, or it'd be like festivals that they'd be having upstate where uh, you you helping like people in the town put together festivals, like a blueberry pie festival or some stupid shit like that. You helping set up tables and they feed you and give you like outside food and all type of shit like that or whatever. Like, So if you got like a nonviolent crime, you might be on um, outside clearance and you get, the, you get to be outside for like eight hours a day or something, and you come back to the jail and whatever. Now, were you okay? I mean, it was out of your control for the transfer, correct? Mm -hmm. But looking back at how everything played out, did you want to end up moving somewhere else? Or if you could have it your way, you wish you would have just stayed at Hudson the whole time? Well, hell no, because the, the thing is with, with Hudson, it's only two places, I believe, in New York that have dorms. Um, and like there's, all right, so they have dorms, an eight-man dorm, and they got a six-man dorm. And then they also got rooms with a key. It's only two upstate prisons in New York that I know of that has rooms with a key. And I believe it's Hudson and Wallkill. Um, Otisville might have a room with a key. I'm not sure. O Otisville might be shut down. I don't really remember. But definitely Hudson and Wallkill. So you work your way to a room from an eight-man room to, like, you, they put you on a list. 
So you might go from an eight-man room to a six-man room in the house and then work your way up to a room with a key, depending on if somebody go home, who go home. Somebody might catch a ticket. A ticket is like a disciplinary charge in jail. Like, why are you in jail? Like, you do something. is a tier one, tier two, tier three. Um, tier three being the worst, of course. Tier one is like some regular stupid shit, you know. Tier two is like in the middle. So somebody might catch a ticket or something and go to the box and they get they might lose their room. Um, you get to move in their room. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So I I was there for however long I was there for, and like right before I left, I worked my way up to a room with a key. This is when you could separate yourself from niggas. Like you could just be in your room, read, work out, like do your little push-ups and shit, like sleep if you want to, you know what I'm saying, without being interrupted, without niggas walking past, um, eat your food. We had um, hot plates and shit like that at, at Hudson or whatever, so I was eating real food. I wasn't eating like no bullshit. Like I was um, getting 55, whatever, I think you get 55 pounds a month or something or every two weeks, I don't really remember, but my, my locker was full. I had wild food all the time. I always had wild money on my books. It was never a problem for me to eat or to get whatever I wanted to, you know. I was getting the banquet chicken. The banquet chicken is like real popular in New York jails. I don't know about anywhere else. But like the frozen fried chicken is real popular. Um, eating that, eating of course like, you know, regular shit like Jack Mac sticks, fried Jack Mac sticks and seafood. Um, pasta, seafood, rice with the coconut rice and all that type of shit. Like, I was always eating. So you could be in your room and just chill, like, and do your time. Um, or you could be in your, not, um, have your room and not, and be bullshitting. It's up to you. But you could, re if you want to get your mind right, it's easier to get your mind right in the room. Like, when you, you don't got nobody sleeping in a bed next to you, or like noise and traffic coming in and out, you know, you just in your room and you could just lamp. So I worked my way up to um, just being there for the amount of time I was in. A lot of niggas ended up going home or like I said, catching new charges or whatever, or going, they might've just moved to another jail or whatever. And I ended up getting a room. So I was comfortable with getting a room. Now leaving Hudson and going to, uh, to Fishgill, I ended up back in a dorm. Um, and I was in the, uh, the work release dorm. Because when you don't have that much time in your bed, they're not gonna put you in a house with, especially if you got a nonviolent charge, they're not gonna put you in a house with a bunch of, you know, niggas that got wild time left or whatever. Like, they, if I would've did more time, then I would have been able to get like outside passes and shit like that or whatever to go out for 10 hours a day and then work your way up to weekends or um, splits from like four days on the street and three days in jail, shit like that in the work release house. What levels, you already described it, but is there a certain name for the levels of security of each prison that you yeah. had? Is is um uh, well, not me, but in New York, period. Yeah, I was only in minimums. Um, there's maximum, matter of fact, sorry, mediums. I was in a medium. There's Both, maximum, of them? Maximum, Both of them were mediums? Yeah, there's maximum, medi medium, and then minimum. Minimums don't exist in New York no more. They shut all the, the, the minimums down. Like, they don't, they don't exist no more. Like, those is like, the difference between a max, a medium, and a minimum is a minimum is like a, a camp. It could have one gate or no gates. Um, a minimum has two gates. So to get in, it's two gates. It's, there's a gate that they open, the first gate they open, and then you in the middle, and then it's another gate the, the, before you leave. The maximum is the wall. Like that's so when niggas be like, I'm behind the wall, like, oh, I got niggas behind the wall, that's the maximum. Like, you in a maximum prison, like, there's guards with, you know what I'm saying, AKs and shit on the, on the roof and all that type of shit. Like, that's maximum security, you behind the wall. Like, I was in a medium. And the wild stuff happens in maximum? 
Um, the, the wild shit happens everywhere. It, it, could, it could go down wherever. It depends on your environment. It depends on the people. It depends on a lot of different things. Like, it could happen anywhere. Like, I, I've seen shit. i heard shit, you know. But whatever. Jail ain't what niggas think it is, though. Like, all that TV shit niggas be... Like, niggas getting raped and all that. That shit don't happen in jail, man. Ain't nobody getting raped in jail. If you in, if you in jail and you doing something with a dude, it's because you want to. Or it's because, um, yeah, it's because you want to. And if and if, and if if somebody is doing that to, to people, they going to find a way to get you up out of there. Somebody going to get you up out of there. Like, you're not... If niggas find out that's what you're doing, you actually like doing something to, to raping niggas or whatever, touching people when they sleep, all type of funny shit, niggas gonna get you up out of there. So the the the, the niggas that's in there doing shit with niggas is niggas that want to do shit with niggas. And, and nobody sleeping, getting raped and all that shit. That shit is all that American me TV bullshit, all that odd shit, that shit is nonsense. That's all that sensationalized, that shit is fake. It's cap. And this was all state prison. Yeah. Now, what does being incarcerated in state prison feel like for someone that's never experienced that? Um, uh, the shit is hell. It's hell. I mean, like I said, it ain't as bad as TV make it seem, but it's literally hell. Like, you, you, your freedom, like, literally taken away. You can't do shit. You, you got to get told when you can shower for the most part. Or whatever like now when you get to your spot in a spot that i was in like hudson or whatever any spot like that any medium like that where you in dorms and shit, the, the showers is in the hallway so if you in the if you in the house you're not on program or something you could take a shower whenever you feel like it as long as of course nobody's in the shower or whatever there was like there's jails where there's multiple showers and shit like that but i wasn't in one of them spots so i don't know nothing about that it was only like that when i was in um, in in downstate and matter of fact, not even in downstate. When I was in Ulster, they had the shower lined up. And nigga, another thing too, ain't nobody ass naked in the showers. If you ass naked in the shower, it's cause you're an old head, or like that's in, that's the type of time you want. Niggas gonna get you up out of there. Like niggas see you ass naked in that shower, niggas gonna fuck you up and get you up out of there. Niggas is not tolerating that. Everybody in their boxes and they 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 shower shoes and they washing up in their state boxes. Like none of that. Nobody's ass naked looking at you. Ain't none of that funny shit going on. Like, but um. Yeah, just as far as like what it would be like for a person that never been there before, it's it's hell. Like you see shit. Like I ain't never seen like a, a grown ass man weeping crying until I was in prison. Like his his mom's might have died. He would call back home. His mom's died, or they not let him go to the funeral, or he found out his girl fucking his man. Or, you know, all type of shit like that. Like, his girl leaving him, shit like that. Like, she don't want sit, to send, bring the kids up there. Like, it's all type of shit that niggas be going through. So that's, and that's another reason why all of that shit that people be making, like, everybody, like, you learn patience and respect in jail if you ain't learn it in the street. Cause you don't have no choice. You, everybody going through something in there. You don't know what niggas is going through. Nigga, like I said, somebody could have just lost their mom they baby mother might be tripping on bullshit. Like, don't want to come up there. Haven't been up there in weeks. She might be leaving them. So you don't know what niggas is carrying around. You know what I'm saying? So you got to respect everybody accordingly. So everybody give each other extra respect in jail. Like, it's only the idiots that want to go up there starting shit, trying to make a name for themselves. Everybody else trying to go home. Now, some have experienced county jail, but never state prison. Is there a difference? Yeah, it's a big difference. In, in county jail, it's more confined. It's more restriction. Um, it's less movement. And I didn't know what niggas meant by that shit until I went upstate. But, like, in upstate, when you're in, you in prison, you busy. You're in program most of the day. 
So you wake up in the morning or whatever. If you want to wake up and go to Chow, Chow is the cafeteria for that people that don't know. That's what Chow is. Uh, at least that's what they call it in New York. I don't know what they call it everywhere else. But Chow is um, like 6 o'clock in the morning or some shit like that, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Me, personally, I'm not waking up at no 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning to go eat no slop. I'm going to wake up at whatever, 8 o'clock, and go make some pancakes or something in the kitchen. And then I'm going to go to my program, whenever my program is. Um, but, yeah, wake up in the morning or whatever. You go eat breakfast or not. Um, then you start your, you, they, they call you, you come back in the house or whatever. If you went to child, you chill for a minute, wait till they call program. You go to program. You go do whatever you're supposed to be doing. If you go on to get get your GED, you go on to school. If um, you go into outside clearance, you go to outside clearance. If you go into small engines, you go to small engines. And you're doing that until um, count time. So I think count probably was like maybe, I don't even remember. It might have been like. 12 o'clock or some shit. No, matter of fact, it was probably like 2 o'clock, 2 or 3 o'clock or whatever. It was probably like count time when they when they shift change and shit. And they, they basically count the inmates or whatever to make sure nobody escaped and shit. Um, and then after that, after you come back from program, you do whatever the fuck you want after that. You could go outside, you go in a day room, get on a jack, get on the phone, cook, read, Beat your shit, shower, whatever you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? You got the whole rest of the day until um, lights out to do whatever the fuck you're going to do. Whatever you can possibly do at that time. Play cards, gamble, whatever you're going to do. It's more movement. like, And um, it's less confined. Whereas in a county, if you're on your, your block, you just on your block. Like You're not moving to another block unless you like a like a janitor or some shit like that. Like, you're not really, like, moving around like that. And which county jails have you experienced previously, just for transparency? Um, when, I was, when I was a kid, I was in a place called Jenny Clarkson or whatever. It's like a, like a camp, um, like, a, like a juvenile camp. Um, they didn't have no gate. So that was, like, my first experience with jail. And then um, Valhalla in Westchester, that's it. And of course, the Tombs. The Tombs is a county jail in Manhattan. So that's that's my my whole county jail experience. 